contact I've been waiting for. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, they didn't put his picture in. That scowl of his may have broken the camera. Well, it just says, Colonel Harry Connolly recommended for the Congressional Medal of Honor and uh, a story about Italy. No, he's still a colonel, I guess. Yeah, he's somewhere in London, hiding. He hates publicity. Ken, come here, please. Joe, I've got to go. Sir? What is it, sir? lost him, sir. He didn't sign off, did he? No, sir. I think they cut him off. Like they did when they caught up with that guy yesterday afternoon. Well, at least he was able to pinpoint the target. What's it all about, sir? Sit down, gentlemen. Ken, what do you know about this atomic research that's going on? I read about it. Little over my head. Hanging over all of our heads right now. Allied intelligence sources confirm the fact that the Germans are very close to figuring out a way to harness this energy. Atomic energy. Build it into a bomb. The super bomb. I've heard rumors. A single one would be sufficient to wipe out London. We finally got a fix on the hideout where all the scientific brain work is going on. Edelberg, a little village. But at least two British spies have died there confirming the location. Can we bomb it? Oh, yes, we'll have to bomb it. I don't know how, but I do know it'll take the best men we can find, and they'll be accused of murder if they survive. Murder? Killing helpless allies and friends. Murder, yes. 12 o'clock high. A QM production. Starring Paul Burke. Also starring... Chris Robinson, and Frank Overton, with guest stars James Whitmore, Andrew Duggan, Joe Maross. Tonight's episode, The Ace. It's only one building I'll bomb and trail. I have at least uh, four bombardiers that seldom miss. How much of the surrounding construction would you destroy? Sir, I don't see any surrounding construction on this photograph. Oh, sir, I'm afraid this photograph is rather an old one. It's about 1920 or so. Well, uh, just how much surrounding construction is there? Well, there are newer buildings here and here. Mm -hmm. So we're given to understand. 
Uh, incidentally, sir, I'm having a model made of this photograph for what it's worth. You know, General, if we do as well here as we did at Marienburg, I'm sure I can contain the impact to, say, within, oh, 20 acres. 20 acres? Yes, sir. Well, what's wrong with that? Ted, would you uh, get your people busy on that model? At once, sir. Sit down, Joe. Oh. Well, when the boss invites you in the office for a little talk... I have to order this done, Joe. I don't have to outline the dirtier part of the job. But I, I exercise my discretion now to do so. Because I cannot send anyone without describing for him absolutely what he's going to be up against. The Germans have filled the buildings adjacent to the one we're after with prisoners of war. Russians, English, American. Officers of the highest rank and the most important personal and political associations they could find. Now, even if you confine your strike to 20 acres, which would be a minor miracle, they're going to call you a butcher. And they'll have 20 acres of bodies to prove it. Now I order you to go, and the responsibility is mine. You can refuse, and I'll deal with it. I suggest that you file a formal protest as a defense against possible future accusations. But General, isn't there some alternative? Send in a, a sabotage team. There's no time. They already got two spies. They must know we're on to them. We have 48 hours to bomb, or they'll escape us, and you can assess the consequences. General. General, there's a perfect man for this job. And you know him. Khan. Colonel Connolly. Harry Connolly? Yes, sir. He's up for the Congressional Medal of Honor right now for doing exactly the same thing in Italy and earlier in the Pacific. General, he can drop a one-ton bomb in a thimble, so there's no reason why any of these prisoners have to be killed. I know the man, sir. He used to be my instructor. He taught me everything. General, he is your man. He can do this job right. There's not enough time to send for him. He's already here, sir. In London. Ken Chandler and I talked to him last night. As a matter of fact, we have a date to buy him a drink. And he's coming here today. Colonel Connolly, can you tell me, how did you happen to uh, come up with this skip bombing technique? Was it something you invented? <laughs> look, we developed it because we had to. How else are you going to bomb a cave? Now, look, will you knock off the pictures? Follow me the rest of my life. I've been here for a quiet drink with some friends. But, Colonel, uh, this uh, wasn't the only technique you used on, on, on bombing caves and things. Oh, I can look, remember. look, 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 look. We had something in the Pacific you haven't got here. Japanese build their bunkers out of palm logs, right? They're rubbery, they're springy. You drop something heavy on top of them, it bounces off. So you hit them with a half-ton bomb, you get an airburst. All right, flat dive, skip bomb, hit the front instead of the top. Actually, I was thinking about Italy, sir. You hit some targets down there, you got the Congressional Medal of Honor for hitting. No. no. I'm in for the Congressional Medal. Haven't got it. That's all. Don't you guys ever listen? Hey, look, you take one more picture, Buster, and I'm going to wrap that All right, that's enough pics. Colonel no pictures. Connolly? Yeah. Sir, you want it on the telephone. Oh, good. good. Where is it? This way, sir. Excuse me? Connolly. Colonel, this is Joe. Listen, I'm sorry to be late up there, but um, something came up. <laughs> That's all right. Where are you? Because I'm coming there. I got to get away from these newspaper characters. Uh, I'm at Wing Headquarters. Uh, Ken is here also. Listen, Colonel, um, you can help us with this. Help with what? Well, we have a target, sir, and we need you. We really do. How about it? All right, Joe, I'll... Uh, I'll get a taxi or something.
Now, I'm sorry that the target area is not complete, sir, but uh, the essentials are there. And, of course, we can complete it for you later, if you wish. This is what we want to hit without destroying anything else. The atomic scientists are working here. The prisoners of war are... Yes, Joe told me all about it. Gonna knock out the brain trust without hurting our friendly POWs. Like skipping a bomb into one of those Japanese bunkers. You know, actually, I first thought about this when I remember that article I read last night about what you did in Italy. Blowing up that radar station without even putting a scratch on that church. They haven't mentioned that I got shot down in Italy, Joe. <laughs> well, you're here. Now, make this work, and you might be one of the few Americans ever to wear two medals of honor. I'm not supposed to fly combat here, Joe. I'm involved in this transition training program. Oh, hitting it? Well, that's a breeze. Breeze, Colonel? General, how are you, sir? I'm fine. How are you? you? Yes, they asked me to look this thing over, and... Uh... There's no great problem. I've just had a talk with Bomber Command about you. The weather over Edelberg looks bad tomorrow, so I've set up the mission for the following morning. Now, they suggested that you use tomorrow to teach your skip bombing technique to the best pilot available, if that's feasible. Yes, sir. Teach. General Khan's a wonderful teacher, but he knows the technique. It's his, and he's the best. Sir, he's done this three or four dozen times without even one miss. No, sir, I don't think we should go with the second best as long as we have... Joe, knock it off. Now, maybe they think I couldn't do it. Oh, no, no, they, uh, they just simply indicated they prefer your living image to your sainted memory. That's a wise guy. Look, you give me a B-25 and I'll lay that egg right in their water closet. A B-25, sir? Well, you sir, it can be converted for one-man operation, one man to fly it. I want the bomb release and a trigger switch on the yoke, and I want the bomb bay converted for 50-pound practice bombs, but then I want the crew to stand by to reconvert it for a 1,000-pounder. Well, here we are, sir. Oh, your luggage. Well, let's see. Uh, here, you take the bunk, sir, and I'll take the cot. Eh, Joe, for the love of Mike, when are you going to stop calling me sir? Well, you see, that's that discipline. You kept drilling it into us. <laughs> I don't know how you made it this far. Four years ago, I told your old man that you were probably going to bust your blame fool neck. Just lucky. That's uh, a fact. Well, you're a good pilot, I'll say that for you. And now you're a bit shot, huh? Tell me something, Con. Why haven't they, um... Uh... Promoted me? Yeah. I'm a career pilot, but not a career officer. You understand? I know one thing. You've made good pilots out of a lot of guys. No speeches, huh? <laughs> you know, it's funny. When I was in Italy, I knew... I knew that I had to miss that church. Now, I hadn't been in church since I was a kid of three. I promised myself that if I ever got out of that one, I... Oh, you got a light? I've uh, also set up targets for your practice run. Uh, look, keep all the traffic out of the air. When I get that bit in my teeth, I go wild sometimes. Uh, uh, look, Con, why don't we uh, talk for a second about the possibility of me going with you? Why? Well, insurance, for one thing. Look, kid, when I need insurance, I'll buy it. I've done this thing 43 times. Look, I didn't have any doubts. Well, I don't have.
See me through this one, will you, pal? Just one more time, huh? And then four more right after that. Five out of eight bullseyes. It was very impressive. Oh, incidentally, Ken, we've reconverted the bomb rack to take care of the thousand pounder. A slight delay in fuse so that he can get maximum penetration. Gentlemen, we're in luck. Someone at VR in London turned up a snapshot of the target building. I've had it enlarged. Fine. Let's see. Khan, take a look at this. You sure this is it? Oh, yes. In happier days, some little clerk took his camera with him on holiday. You can paste that up in the cockpit. Anything that helps. Khan, are you sure about flying alone? What about navigation? Well, he'll follow my formation. I'll fly a diversion with the group to draw off the flak and the fighters. And he'll stay with me at 10,000 feet until we all have Edelberg in sight. Then I'll turn the group off and he can drop down and bomb at, uh, what was that, 330 feet? Yeah. All right, if you're sure, but we can't leave any part of this to chance. Well, Ken, unfortunately, we can't do this by clockwork. There's a human element, so there's always chance. But don't worry, we have the solid gold expert. And no speeches. No, it's a good plan. It's, it's simple. Now line up on this pond. Come off the coast, course 105. Head straight for the pond. It's easy to see. And I'll turn, guide right down this street. I'll drop the egg right after I pass this building. And pull up. It's a brief. Put that iron potato right in that doorway.
They must feel Adelberg is safe, Joe, or they'd be hitting us harder, wouldn't they? That's a general idea, Harvey. Pilot's crew. Watch for the B-25 with Colonel Connolly. If you see them go after him, let me know at once. Black stopped. Call in the fighter support. Zircon leader the Little Brothers. Jerry fighters will attack us now. Come on in. Ram Rider Zircon 20. Are you all right, over? Ram Rider Zircon 20, are you all right, over? I'm all right. Get off my back. Get off my pack! pound egg in its belly, it wallowed a lot more than I expected. When I went into my vertical turn, just before my bomb run, she slipped. <laughs> and I pulled back with all, everything I had, and she leveled out. And at 3-3-0, believe it or not, right where I wanted to be. But, but she wouldn't stop. She kept sinking. It was like it was in an air pocket. <laughs> she sank like a pregnant whale. 80 feet, anyway. I thought I was going to pancake right into that village. <laughs> 80 feet? Now you were, what, 250 yeah, just about. I know I can spit in the gutter. <laughs> then the pom-poms started to come up, like confetti. You should have seen the airplane. I counted 16 holes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. But we got the job done. Right. Uh, excuse me, sir. Can I see you outside a minute alone? That's very important, sir. Excuse me. Uh, listen, hold that story a minute, will you? <laughs> All right. Yeah, if we could tell the whole truth about this, it would make the well-known shot heard round the world sound like a pop gun. Major Franklin P. Banks, the son of Senator Banks. Captain Arthur Tracy from Joplin, Missouri. What's Captain this? Well, that's from Germany, sir. Axis Sally. Also, Brigadier Gregor Chevney of the Soviet ground forces. And his aide. And Colonel Tito Rubin of the What's Soviet it all about? Air. That's a roster of names of the guys they claim were killed at Edelberg this morning. <laughs> Forget it. Propaganda. Colonel Peter Hall. 918th Gallagher. Captain George. Oh, yes, sir. Of the 72nd Infantry Division. Yes, sir. Captain William Prince. And the pity is that Captain Prince was a man of God. Yes, sir. Edelberg is no more a military target than are the pyramids of ancient Egypt. And the irony is, they sent a great hero to butcher these helpless men. Colonel Harry Connolly. Why did... Yes, sir. General Britt. Do you hear what that crazy dame called me? We got the wrong building, Tom. What? 
Colonel Britt wants to see you. You made a mistake that can't be corrected. They're demanding explanations of me. I'm asking you for facts. I have to formulate some answers. But primarily, I have to throw a punch that hits at once. The model, I think, is a factor, sir. It isn't accurate. You knew that from the start. Where are the inaccuracies? Colonel? Connolly? The pond wasn't there. This pond? Sir? I'm asking you to tell me what is inaccurate with this model. Well, he gave me this pond as my primary piloted checkpoint. It wasn't there, that's all. It did show in the later recon photos we had, sir. All right, they filled it in. They camouflaged it. What else? This arch wasn't there. None of those buildings were there. And there was a... a windmill somewhere in there. The whole model stinks. Con. I want you to review exactly what happened when you found out the pond wasn't there. You pulled up, turned around quick, went back. Could you have guided on this street instead of this one? Because there's very little doubt that you hit this house and not this one. There's one mistake in 44. I'm not accusing you of anything, but we've got to go back in there. And I have to know how much they have managed to change the appearance of the town. Did you hear what she called me? How did she find out? Did you advertise? Con, you're talking about Axis Sally. I don't... Of course, we all know how I got into this mess, don't we? Loudmouth Joe Gallagher, sounding off from the rooftops, right? All right, Colonel, you're dismissed. Thank you, General. Thank you. Where is he staying? With Gallagher at the 918th. Call the base surgeon. Tell him he's got a case of combat fatigue on his hands. Get me Colonel Gallagher. Yes. General Britt is calling. Yes, General. Gallagher. Uh, no, sir. I, uh, I expected a call. Well, the Nazis finally made a mistake, Joe, and they made a big one. They broadcast the wrong information. They could have made us believe we got their atomic brain trust. Sir, I... Uh... I still can't believe that Khan missed that building or hit the wrong one. Well, that's not your personal problem anymore. Connolly is suffering from combat fatigue. I think that's why he missed just one too many. Combat fatigue? I'm having a base surgeon notified. I want him to look after Connolly. And I'm notifying you that your mission for tomorrow is Edelberg. At the earliest possible hour with the greatest possible force. With the prisoner still there? 20 acres of bodies? Yes, 20 acres of bodies, if that's a cost. Think of what you're saving and live with a dirty name. Survival is not a factor, Joe. Neither the prisoners nor yours. Get that building. Tomorrow, get it. You better make sure he does. Yes, sir. Joe, come on. What happened? You know what that is, kid? It's called a sucker punch. You walk up to an old friend and you say, Hi, pal. Hey, how are you, friend? My hero. And then, pow, the sucker punch. No, forget it. Oh, no, don't you forget it, Harvey. Don't you forget it at all, because he'll do the same thing to you he did to me. Yeah, he's real smooth. Con, look, I understand. I know what's wrong. You're out of gas. He's sick. Sick? Yeah, I'm sick. That's right. I'm sick. Chicken liver here. 
got me to take on his dirty work. Old pal, my gold-plated hero. And then pow! Oh, God. Khan, you need a rest. Yeah, well, who's taking the blame, huh? Whose reputation went right out the window? I poured out everything I knew to you, just like you were my brother. And then you got me into this dirty mess. Get it, Doctor, quick! Khan, no! Stop it! Stop it! Khan! Khan! Stop it! Sorry it's to all right. It's all right. What is it? I'm sorry to awaken you, Ed, but I think we've come up with a pretty good plan. What happened to you? Conley belted him. Oh, he just blew his top for a minute. It happens to all of us. He's fine now. Doc Kaiser gave him a sedative. Let's forget it, huh? What about the plan? General, I would like to go in with the B-25. Only this time, five minutes ahead of the group. Now, Ken will lead the group. And I'll use Conley's technique. If I miss... If I can't call Ken and tell him that I've succeeded, then he'll saturate. And we'll just have to live with the dirty name. Whose idea was it? Actually, it was Connolly's. Oh. Is he thinking again? Yes, sir. Well, if you succeed in the B-25, you'll save a lot of lives. But Jerry will be ready for you. He's been amply warned. Yes, sir, I realize that. It's a good plan. I approve it. Thank you, sir. Khan. Khan. Yes, sir. Uh, let me see the orders for tomorrow's mission to Adelberg, will you? Yes, sir. It's all ready tomorrow, sir. Good morning. Morning, sir. Sandy. Run the whole formal checklist, shall we, Harvey? I don't do this often enough to take anything for granted. Neither do I, sir. External check. Complete. Pins. Pins aboard, sir. Pito cover. Off. Oh. Set the war off, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Shows how far gone I was. Cooled me off a little, but I couldn't sleep a bit. You knew I was here, huh? Yeah. The minute I woke up and found you gone. I could have been anywhere. No, Con, not you. I know you too well. 
Joe. Let me take her. I'm sorry, Don. I can't. Okay. Foxhound leader. Passing checkpoint 860. Mark. Ramrod out. Exactly on time. Five minutes ahead of us. B-51. And our fighter cover? Doesn't belong to us. We're expecting P-38s. I have a hunch we'll be needing them before this is over. Staging this war to win medals for you. Conley the Fox on leader. I'm going in ahead of Ramrod now to draw off the flag so we can get to the target. I'll argue with you later. Out. All right, Joe, I'm right on the beam. Are you behind me? Yes, I'm behind you. 300 feet. Get it up to 330. 330. Quick. Understand. 330. Steady as you go. I'm right on line. Right on line. Okay, Joe. Let him have it when I call it. Good bank shot. I think 
a call to that crate and get out of here. They're after you. Ramrod to Khan. Where are you? Over. I'm going to try out as a fighter pilot. I got four beautiful targets back here. Negative, Khan. Head for home. Outrun them. You have the speed. Certainly would have wanted to go out shooting. Eight fighter planes after him? He wasn't a fighter pilot. You weren't leading a fighter group either, General. You had no business ordering those bombers down to cover a P-51. Yes, that was quite a reversal of form, wasn't it? He was also covering a B-25, sir. For that, I'm thankful. I thank him, too. But off the record, he had no business doing it. In any event, Connolly's name is an asset even more than his achievements. And that's important in war. He did go in ahead of me. Drew off the flak. It was a real Harry Connolly show. His technique... And his guts. At which point I think he would say, please, no speeches. Excuse me, sir. A word from Air Sea Rescue, sir. Colonel Harry Conley's been found in the channel. He's badly wounded, but they're bringing him in. Sergeant? Would you like a drink? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Gentlemen. Oh, uh, incidentally, Joe, congratulations. 